think I'm amplified because your face uh, to be presented either in the live stream or the recording for, you don't have to tell us why it's completely fine uh, just stay outside of the, the tape lines okay this little X is for me all right so I'll be coming back to this spot and uh, I'll be speaking in this direction so if you want to see my facial expressions which can be exciting uh, make sure that you're on this side welcome again my name is Shane come on in and just touch base with Jess thank you uh, the reason I'm sitting in front of you today is because I have a lot of experience talking about risk reduction and self-defense. Okay. I've been doing this since 2005, and I trained when I was young. I'm an escape training instructor. I taught internationally. I've had about 2,000 students over the years, so I've, I've shared this with quite a few people. We'll be doing a modified version of what I usually teach. You're welcome to sit down. I'm going to kind of blab for a, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while. I'm also in the prevention science program. I'm a doctoral candidate, which means I have passed prelims. Go me. Uh, yeah, so I'm on to my final research project. I have done some lit review work and, and looking into risk reduction, personal safety. I've been doing this for about 10 years. Uh, I also teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. On that note, I do not have the time to train you to be like a warrior, uh, a peaceful warrior. Uh, but I do have time to share with you some of the really neat to tricks and tools that uh, I think are accessible to everyone, uh, regardless of where you come from, what your comfort level is, we'll work on your physiology uh, under duress, and uh, feel free to ask me questions. Okay? I love questions. All right? if, it, if it's a big what if question, I might pull you aside and answer it to the side because those are rabbit holes and we can spend a lot of time in rabbit holes um, as, as they go down. Okay, so with us, so that's me. Uh, I'll let Jess introduce herself briefly, and then we'll go around. And what I'm what I'm interested in is your first name, okay? And I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see you, okay? I, I can see like the lightness of your teeth if you're smiling or, or grimacing. I can't really tell. Uh, so just your name, and let's see, uh, maybe something that you're interested in learning today. And I'll try to touch on that topic. Um, all right. So we'll start with Jess. If you just Okay, so like size, uh, you're not you know, the largest, strongest, big, yeah, so how to defend yourself with a good game plan. You can do that for you. Okay.
piggyback on that real quick. One of the biggest things you can get out of self-defense, so the falling industry or falling is a multi-billion dollar industry. So if you can learn how to fall better, that's an extremely wonderful, like, it's not what you would think about when you think about self-defense, but you're defending yourself against the environment as well. And yeah, that's great. I've heard about people crashing their bike and they roll out of it and they stand up. And it's like no broken hip, no collies fracture. You know? Yeah, so thank you, thank you. So we will talk about some of the worst case scenario stuff. And, and again, you don't have to participate in anything you don't want to. You're welcome to sit back and watch. You're like, yeah, I'm comfortable with most of this, but not with my, you know, maybe it's really uncomfortable with your training partner. And you're like, I'm just going to opt out of this single one. It's totally fine. No judgment. You don't have to explain it to me. Nothing. So it's so wonderful. Yeah, we will talk about some uncomfortable positions. So thank you. Thank you. Same. And escaping. Okay, we can do that. Thanks to what? Thanks to be aware. Okay. Awareness. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. We're just, you're more than welcome to sit down. Yeah, uh, we're doing first name and then maybe something you'd like to learn today. So, and it's your turn? Yep. <laughs> Let's stand up. We'll start getting warmed up. Actually, Jess, do you want to do a little warm up with them? Just like a joint mobility thing, and then I'll, I'll kind of blabber on um, with, well, not blabber on. I'll talk about important stuff. Uh, but if Jess wants to lead us through a warm up, I'll kind of talk while she does that.
So we'll start out by by saying that WCU has a lot of resources available. Did anybody watch the pre-video? They timed out? That's not good. Did anybody else try? I put a lot of time and energy into it. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to learn. All right, so we'll figure that out. So essentially, yeah, WCU uh, puts a lot of time, energy, and effort into making sure resources are available to you, but you have to seek them out. Because uh, if we don't know, then we can't provide those resources. So we want you to know they exist. So for the, the on-campus students, you know, there's Cougar Health Services. You pay fees for them, and you have access to the physicians and the, the nursing staff. And they have a whole wide range of services they provide there. It's actually pretty pretty remarkable. And then we have CAPS, Counseling, Testing, Counseling and Psychological Services. Pardon me. And you can get a number of appointments uh, with a counselor. And I know they did Zoom sessions for a while, but they're back to doing in person. Uh, so if you need access to those services, they're available. Uh, there's the peer support network, which you can uh, Google that. You can look that up online. And essentially, that's uh, a referral network. And uh, a group of administrators will try to honor privacy as much as possible. And they'll consider the individual's situation. That is not for high-risk reporting. Uh, but if you notice someone's behavior changing or something that you're concerned about or someone's dra grades drop off if you're a faculty or staff member, you can report to that and then a team will sit down and, and they'll send that student an email and reach out to them. Okay, so it's really good to know about them. Branch campuses uh, have varying levels of services on campus. Uh, global students have reimbursements and then we're working on some mental health uh, online programming. Protocol Plus. Has anybody heard about the wellness uh, apps and things like that that are going out to students. Yeah, we're going to get, uh, pretty soon there's going to be a big push for that. So that, that can help you find providers. You can do some self-assessments and, and make sure that you're uh, managing your mental health because school is stressful. It's a protective factor, but it's also a risk factor. All right, because it's adding a big, a big load uh, mentally and emotionally. Okay, so lots of services available. Feel free to ask me about those. It's part of my job to know them, so I'm, I'm happy to share more as we go. Um, if you bump into a self-defense situation or an assault-based situation, call the police. Okay, call the police. That is their job. I was a federal law enforcement officer for a year, and um, that's what you get paid to do. You get paid to show up when things you, know, you shouldn't be managing, whatever's going on. If, you're, if you hear fighting and broken glass and things like that next door, it's not your job to go over there and fix that. Okay, there's people that get paid, and they are trained to manage that kind of situation, so call. All right. So on that note... Uh, WSU Pullman, if you can look at the fire and safety report that's published every year, uh, this is a very safe community. It doesn't mean that everybody is safe all the time, but relatively speaking, this is a very, very safe community. And the Pullman campus is a very safe place, objectively speaking. Right? How we perceive that and how we feel about that can vary, uh, but this is a very educated and safe community. Those of you joining us from branch campuses, uh, your uh, stats, you know, on-campus stats, there's almost no crime over the last three years. It's pretty much nothing on the brand, and that's on campus. That doesn't mean that the communities uh, that surround those, those campuses have no crime. Uh, so the Pullman campus, you know, as far as, well, and then I say, well, so we're gonna talk about self-defense today. So in my mind, there's three big categories, and if you talk to criminologists, you talk to other folks, you get different categories and different theories for projecting out uh, what crime and violence is. Uh, but we have, like, the robbery type deal. So somebody's trying to take your things personal property or they're coming onto your property, that kind of thing. All right, there's the physical assault. Okay, so somebody's just trying to hurt you, right, and that can happen. And then there's sexual assault. Okay, so there's those three buckets. And it doesn't mean they're mutually exclusive. You could have uh, a situation where all three of those things are happening at the same time. All right, so the techniques I provide today are not going to be tailored to any one of those in particular. They're going to span a game plan that's going to help you out in all of those scenarios. Okay, so any questions on that real quick? self-defense. Okay, and that'll change, you know, if you look at the criminal justice definitions versus the sociology de definitions versus the criminology um, versus the, uh, the criminal justice, you know, those definitions change, and that's, uh, from the prevention side of things, it gets really tricky to measure, um, you know, when has a crime occurred, when has violence actually occurred, and there's a lot of disagreement, and then that amplifies up when we start to make scales and things like that, so. Uh, as, as far as getting prevalence rates and things like that, it's fairly challenging. But anyway, WSU is a relatively safe place, and uh, I, I truly believe that from an objective standpoint. Okay. So there's, you, you can look uh, kind of at a triangle of, of factors that contribute to uh, a 
the self-defense scenario. There's the environmental piece, okay? And we can do a lot, like there's the blue telephone boxes if you're on campus, and you can, you can push a button and it sends an alert and people come and respond to that. Uh, there's community policing, that's where the law enforcement officers are coming through the community, they're a face, you know them, uh, and they're, they're trying to be social, they're trying to reach out and be friendly and that kind of thing. So there's environmental things you can do. You can actually also just be present in your community. I'm not saying you should go out at 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. in the morning and just explore who's out, uh, but if there are people out and about, uh, that means there's eyes out and about, and their crime is less likely to happen if people can see. Okay, so you can contribute, uh, use your discretion. Like I said, don't just show up in risky places uh, looking to make it safer. <laughs> All right, that might, not, that might not be the best thing to do. All right, there's uh, perpetrators. Okay. And contrary to a lot of the people that, that teach self-defense or teach risk reduction strategies, you can change them. Okay. You can prevent perpetrators from becoming perpetrators. And we know this because we've studied children. And we've followed them long-term in longitudinal studies over time. So you can, you can influence self-control, self-regulation, uh, anger management, okay, assertiveness training, things like that, and you can actually prevent people from becoming perpetrators. That's very exciting. Okay? It's very exciting work, and it is prevention work. Uh, and you can intervene in adolescence, uh, emerging adulthood, which is most of this population around like folks tend to be a little bit older, uh, and you can intervene in adulthood. And have influence over those things. So that's exciting. That's not going to be the focus of today's workshop, but we can do that. And then there's the potential victim. Okay? And uh, this comes with caveats. So the best fighters in the world, okay, so I, I teach Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I've done Muay Thai, I've done all kinds of stuff. And uh, those folks, there's been stories just this last year of like uh, anger in a traffic situation and a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu decides to go handle it and he gets shot and he dies. So I was like, wow, you trained for 15 years. You could do all of that and you still were a victim of violence. And we all kind of contribute to those situations. Okay, so just realize that even if you do everything I teach you to, okay, or if you were to come like train with me for 15 years and I train you into the, that peaceful warrior I was talking about, it doesn't mean bad things aren't going to happen. Okay, the likelihood or the probability of them happening goes down. Okay, and you increase your odds of success. So that's what we're going to aim for today. And the stuff I'm going to share with you today really does work. Okay, it's really really neat stuff. So I'm kind of excited about that. Any questions about that? Um, yeah, so uh, everything today is optional. Okay, so the little risk management brief. You don't have to participate in anything you don't want to. You can participate in all of the technique. You can do one. You can you know, just sit and watch. It's up to you. It's totally fine. No judgment from us. You don't have to explain yourself. If you do need to step out, even if you need to go get a drink of water, just let one of us know. We don't want people just disappearing out the door. We're both trained in mental health first aid, and we can just be a person that can be there for you. But please don't just leave. Uh, let us know if you're going to step out. Uh, if you, uh, for example, another risk piece, if you were to step and get your toe caught between these mats, we want to know about that. Okay, so one, be careful of the mats because uh, your toes could slip between them. Right? And let us know if something happens so you know, we can monitor that. If you just need some space, that's fine. Just say, hey, I'm, I'm going to step out and get some space, use the bathroom, whatever. Okay. So thank you there. I'm trying to think of other risk management things we should talk about. If there is anybody, do we have anybody streaming in? Nodding. Or can we see that? Um, okay. We want to make sure that folks that are streaming in, you want to have a safe place uh, within your home. If you're at your home or you're in a space, if you have coffee tables, things like that, make sure to move that out of the way. Okay. Uh, we don't want you hitting your head or uh, having a training partner that falls and hits themselves, uh, that kind of thing. So take a a uh, clear look at your space. We have just an open space here with mats, so it's relatively safe, uh, but make sure your training environment reflects this. Okay, so take as much time as you need to do that, and uh, I will be touching base with those folks to see if they have questions and things as we go. All right. We have the environment, stepping out, let us know. Participation is optional. And uh, last but not least, and I touched on this briefly, is that uh, I want to be very careful, and there hasn't been a lot of work looking into this yet, but we don't want to encourage uh, you to blame yourself if bad things happen. Right? So that's we kind of categorize that as victim blaming, and it's very difficult to treat it um, if if someone is uh, put in a situation where they do get victimized. And uh, yeah, it can be it can be very very taxing, very challenging to overcome that. So even if bad things do happen, it is not your fault. Okay, 
it's not your fault that bad things happen, even though you could say, I could have done this better, I should have done what Shane told me to do better. Okay, please, please don't do that. I can only ask you to. I can acknowledge that it exists, and I can ask you not to do that. All right, and seek some help and talk to someone. Okay, it's all right. All right, with that, let's start with some technique. All right, so let's stand up. Uh, we will be starting from worst case scenarios, but uh, for like uh, gaining some comfort in the class, we're gonna start on our feet just a little bit, and I'm gonna share a few things that I find to be uh, very effective. All right, so with regards to striking, I'm not a big fan of teaching striking unless there's weapons involved. A um, Couple reasons for that. One is if I teach you to strike, a lot of people break their feet and they break their hands when they do so, okay? Even professional fighters, when they get into street fights, uh, they end up hurting their hands, okay? So the cap tape bone, and there's some other injuries you can get, you can actually fracture that little bugger. So if you hit something with a closed fist, even if you do it right, you try to target like the hard point of your knuckles, you can break your hand. And then that's completely out of commission, and now you have one hand, okay, which is not the scenario you want. However, there's a fun way to strike that they teach uh, in special tactics classes for law enforcement and uh, other folks that have, uh, I guess, high urgency, uh, lots to consider types of jobs. All right, so just go ahead and feel your neck real quick, all right? And tell me what you feel. You feel your trachea? Right. What else do you feel? The hyoid bone? Somebody's taking anatomy. <laughs> yeah, there's a little floaty bone here. Yeah, you can feel that. And then your scalenes and, and a little bit, there's almost nothing there, okay? And it doesn't matter how much you lift, okay? You're really not gonna strengthen this. Okay, you can strengthen the muscles in the back of your neck, a little bit on the side of your neck, and they're stabilizers, so they behave differently than your major movers. Has anybody ever been accidentally smacked in the throat? Yes? Is it basketball? Wow. <laughs> you got hit with a sword in the throat, yeah. Uh, what was it for you? Oh, all of them. Goodness, yeah, I've been boxed out playing basketball before, and you don't have to get smacked very hard in the throat and it kind of sh shuts, your nervous system's like, something bad really just happened, and we're gonna stop everything to deal with this, okay? So the other side about striking is you usually have to have some sort of stance, and there's technique to it, and how you move your hip through, and you extend your arm out, okay? You can actually flick somebody in the throat, it's very uncomfortable, okay? So you can, you can tag them, you can flick them, you can close your, your fingers like this, all right? So let's kind of get in an athletic position, and all I mean by that is you're just gonna take a slight step back, okay? And we're gonna come back to this position later. And you're just going to extend your arm out, okay? And we're going to do this in a fun way. We'll do it with a partner, all right? So uh, could I get a volunteer to help me real quick? If nobody volunteers, I'll get Jess to help. Good sir. Come on over. Yeah, he's not afraid. All right. So a uh, fun thing, and, and this is a little bit of a party trick, but it does work, um, is there's, there's a trick to being able to reach out and, and touch someone, whether it's with your hand or your fist or whatever, that they can't see it very well, okay? Uh, I'll have you do this to me, and I'm gonna really try to get out of the way. Uh, so, <laughs> he's gonna reach out and just try to touch my hand, okay? He can touch it with a closed fist, he can touch it with his fingers, he can give me a high five real quick, however he wants to do it, okay? And I'm gonna try really hard to get out of the way. All right, so, uh, this is the hand. You're not gonna touch my face, right? He's good, okay. All right, so reach out and get it. Oh, he almost got it. Good, all right. So one, one thing that's happening, um, actually, I'm going to tell you a secret real quick. And then we're going we're gonna to do it again. We'll see it. Test, test. OK. Now, did anybody hear that? Did you hear my secret? You didn't? OK, good. All right. So I'm going to really try to get out of the way again. And you have to believe, you know, I'm kind of a biased test subject here. All right, but he's going to go. What did he do different? And I was trying harder to get out of his way that time. What did he do different? What's that? Kind of. That's actually very observant, especially because you were behind him. Yes? Uh, no, no, that's actually an interesting idea though. Boxing is very hard, like boxing is a sport, and the head only moves like one foot in either direction. When people are box boxing and they're moving, it's very difficult to hit their head. Uh, that's good. That's a good, good thought. Let's watch it again. Let's see what he's doing. Okay. Ah. Oh my God! Wait, that time. Ah. Okay. All right. So 
what he's doing, okay, or what I told him to do, was essentially to not necessarily to come up from the bottom, but just keep his elbow in. Okay, your peripheral vision can pick up the elbow doing this, which is how most people throw punches. Okay, so most people will come in and they'll do something like this, or they'll come over the top like that. Okay, Olympic boxers do it because they're boxing around gloves, right? But if you keep your elbow in, it's much harder for your eyes, the saccades, to see that coming because it's just a dot moving forward. Okay, so with your partner, okay, you're going to have one person stand, they're going to have their hand up, and you're just going to reach out and try to tag that hand. Okay, and like I said, there's nothing hard in here. Well, the high weight bone, it's a hard bone, uh, but it floats around. Okay, so you're going to hold the hand up. You're not going to aim at their throat. Please don't do that. Okay, you're going to hold the hand up, and your partner, at first, they're going to raise their elbow. Okay, and you're going to try to get your hand out of the way. Really flinch out of the way. Don't, don't give them any freebies. Like, really get that hand out of the way. Okay, and then after a couple of those, have them do the same thing, but keep the elbow in. And just reach out and touch the hand. And get off beat, too. Don't give them, like, one, two, three. Okay, get off beat. Okay, get some rhythm. All right, so we, and we'll walk around and give a little hand. All right, let's do it. Okay, how's that feeling? Did we have any questions pop up there? I kind of I circulated, but people. The general consensus was it worked. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So that's that's a neat little trick, and it's more than a trick. It's actually it's actually something that professional fighters like when I do coaching. I don't coach a lot of MMA people anymore, uh, but when I did that kind of stuff, I would I would talk to them about elbow position. Okay, and then you can raise and lower your elbows to protect your your liver and your uh, your spleen. Okay. So yeah, keeping your elbows in, that's one of my golden rules, even in jujitsu, keep your elbows in. I was just telling my daughter this morning, I have a seven-year-old, well, as of next month, she'll be seven. Um, when, when I cross my arms, I usually cross my arms like this, instead of like tucking my hands in and crossing up like this, because I can easily open my hands up like this, versus having to pull my elbows out. It's a small thing, but it makes a big difference, okay? All right, we have another standing thing, but I think we got enough kind of jovialness and you got to know your partner a little bit, but we're going to move to some uncomfortable stuff. All right, so I'm going to get uh, Jess to come out and help out, and this was part of our question. So we're going to start on the ground and we're going to build up. So we're going to start from the worst case scenarios and then we're going to build to standing, because if you can handle the worst that things can get, everything else is kind of easy, actually. It's not too bad, all right, relatively speaking. All right, so I'll have Jess on top of me. Okay, and let's see, camera. And she's going to be straddled over my chest. All right, so this is one of our worst case scenarios. And why does it, yeah. <laughs> does, it, does anybody, 
Anybody uh, else, do, do you know why this position is so bad for me? My head is exposed, yes. Yeah, yeah, I can't use my legs. Uh, well, I can, I'm gonna show you how to in a second. But I really can't use them very well to, to manage this distance and to keep her away. Well, the other thing is, is that she can reach me, yeah. But if I reach up, I, I have long arms too. I can't reach her, okay? And I do this with children. So children can actually punch down at me, and if they lean back, I can't touch them. Okay, so this is, kind of, this is a really interesting position, and it's a terrible place for me to be. Uh, interesting, I spent a couple years in South Africa, and I did see a few street fights. They all ended up here. Okay, they all ended up here with somebody who tripped or had too much to drink or whatever happened, and they fell, and then the other person was on top of them. Okay, so how do we get out of this? Well, the first thing we're going to do, can everybody just do a little prey position or a little home alone face? Okay, if you're old enough to know what home alone was. So I'm here, and my elbows are in, okay? Now, I'm gonna use my legs, okay? So this, this is kind of a magical position, okay? Uh, it, it covers me up, so if there, if there was a bladed object or something like that, I'm covering up the vitals of my neck, okay? The vein artery nerve in my neck, I'm covering up my face and my eyes, okay? I'm creating a little bit of a bumper. If I get hit in the head, my head is off the floor, okay? Because if you've taken physics, there's a double impact that can happen if I'm down. Okay, and I don't want that, so I'm up, and I'm praying, okay? And, and if you are praying, that's great, too, because that helps, right? All right, so, so from right here, I have my arms in. Just all of that to say that this is a smart thing to do, okay? My feet come up, all right? And I'm going push my hip, or push my hips into the air doing a bridge motion, and she's going to pivot right over my elbows. If my elbows aren't there, she still falls. So if she goes back to hit me or something, that's a very predictable response, okay? It's a very predictable response. So she tries to hit, try again, yeah, she can, okay, she can. I can even use my knee, okay, I can use my knee. And then I'm gonna turn into a little bit of a, I don't know, like a shark jumping out of the water, all right? So if her hands are down, appreciate what's going on here, okay, what's holding her up? She has four legs, just like a table. So I'm gonna take two of those legs away, and then the table falls away, okay? So I'm here, I'm gonna come up, grab my hands together, I'm gonna pull, trap, there's all kinds of ways to grip the arm, but I just want you to clasp your hands together and grab at the elbow. That's it. Okay. Like I said, there's hyper-technical ways to do this. You just need to grab the arm. And then I'm going to use my leg again to go around the foot. Okay. And then that motion that we did before, we lifted our hips up. We're going to do it again, and I'm just going to do it kind of this way. I'm just going to go up. And then I'll put my hands, put my hands on her knees. Okay, see it again. So we've gone from essentially the worst scenario that possible, or one of three, or one of four. Okay, so I'm here, boom, lump their hands to the floor. I still haven't met the person that will eat gravel by letting their face hit the floor. Okay, they always put their hands up, always. Okay, I'm going to come up, grab, pull over the arm. Okay, if you want to do the fancy stuff, you can. I'm going to block the foot. I'm going to lift my hips up again. I look the way I want to go. They fall over. Climb up, hands on the knees, and then we'll talk about what happens next. Give it a try. And if you have questions, I'll be circulating. All right? And then we do a thing. On three, so I'll say one, two, and then we all clap, and then we go to the technique. All right? So on three, one, two. Let's give it a try.
Hey, hey y'all. I forgot to mention when we're doing these techniques, just make sure your prick knows like when you're gonna go so that they're ready for you so they're not taken off guard and then someone gets hurt. We don't Yeah. Yeah, the things that we're learning today really work. Okay, so these things really work. So even if your partner kind of doesn't want it to happen and they've agreed to participate in your experiment there, uh, there's a really good chance that it's gonna work. I had two good questions, so I'm, I'm going to bring those to the whole group right now, if that's okay. So Jess is on top, okay, and the first question was about wearing glasses, all right? So I wear glasses, and you know, how do you defend from this? The first, or one of the first things that I said in response to that was, a whole lot went wrong for you to end up right here, okay, and you still have your glasses on, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I cover up, I do this like little goggle shape with my hands. Because like I said, I wear glasses too, all right? Mine are for long range. I can see and feel everything they're doing, all right? I can smell their bad breath and everything, but um, I'm, I'm covering up on the outside of my glasses. If they hit, uh, there's a good chance that your glasses are going to uh, damage your eye, okay? The nose piece is going to slide up and cut your eye or something like that, but I hold here. The other thing I said is every time they reach their arm back to punch, I just do a little bridge, and that'll make them to just keep falling every time they try to do it, okay? Yeah, and then I'll just actually an arm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a great question. All right, and then it actually, it, it goes in. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't check to see if she was ready. All right, so um, the other thing was if their knees come up too high, okay, and uh, we didn't, uh, yeah, the, the participant that asked this question, this was something that came up in a previous workshop. So the, the solution to it, uh, come up really high. Now, if I try to put my, I'm pretty darn flexible. I can kind of get that still <laughs> go higher. Yeah, it gets harder for me to trap that leg with my foot. Okay, so then she could base out with that leg when I try to bridge and roll. So this little praying position fixes that. So go back down. Okay. If I go here, little shoulder walk. Now she can't come up because my elbows are holding the legs down. And I can comfortably grab the leg. Okay, so we're all going to do one more. We'll come up, we'll... Oh, another question. If she rolls this way, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, can you see what she's asking you to do? You're going to kind of fall to your shoulder. Yeah, so I go here, and she falls. Everything's exactly the same. And then I put my hands on the knees. Okay, let's see why that happens in a second. It's a good question. Yeah. All right, so I'm here. I'm pulling the microphone out from behind my back. So I'm here, I've got my elbows in, all right? And if anybody wants me to, to talk about if their knees get high, I can teach you how to deal with that. Okay, but if you just have your elbows in, okay? Covering up your frames, your glasses, bridge and their hand goes down, okay? I know where that hand is now. Come up, chomp. Grab the leg, lift my hip and roll. Hands to the knees. All right, let's all do one more and then we'll come back. Thank you. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about what happens next. Yeah, bridge, roll, bridge, roll. Okay. On three, one, two. Oh, let's try that again. On three, one, two. There we go.
All right, fantastic. Okay, so we ended up in uh, a situation that's going to lead us to some general risk reduction advice and escape it advice. So if Jess is down on her back, I just, I just flipped her over. Okay, and I ended up uh, in a better situation. So this particular situation is extremely dangerous for me if I don't have my hands on the knees, or at least if I'm not monitoring the feet. And the reason is that if she was to pull a knee to her chest, okay, you think about center of mass, all of my vulnerable targets are available to her, her heel, okay? So from here, she can hit me in the groin, okay? She can hit me in the solar plexus. She can fracture my sternum, my manubrium, my throat, my face, all of it. So if I have my hands on the knees, it's a little harder, and it helps me get up, and I'm kind of a lazy self-defense person. I don't really want to exert a lot of energy, <laughs> okay? So that's why we put the hands on the knees. Thank you. And then what do we do after that? So you, you're in a situation, you know, all kinds of variables. A lot went wrong to get down there, but I taught you a cool way to get out of it. Okay, one of half a dozen or so ways out of that. Okay, what do you do next? Run? Yes, good. Yes, leave. <laughs> Where are you going? To get help. Where's help? Away from there. Very good. People and. The police are, yeah, police are great. Those are the people that go to, yeah. But they're, you know, they're. Get behind them. Yeah, and go that way. So if you stand up, you're going to sidestep and you're going to go, because they have to get up. It takes a few beats to get up and to chase you. Yeah, not all of us are super agile. Yeah. Go to people, go to lights. Okay, go to people, go to lights. So uh, if, it's, if it's dark or something like that and you see a house light on or something, okay, you want to go there. All right, and that bears out in the, the sexual assault literature that they've, they've done some qualitative work with folks that are incarcerated. So these are folks that were caught. And they're like, well, what were some of your biggest fears? Among other questions that they asked us. It's like getting, hot, getting hurt, getting caught. Okay? So if you're running to people, you're running to lights, okay? that increases their chance of getting caught. So they're more than likely going to stop. Okay. Cool. Any questions there? Let's do it one more time, and I want you to stand up, and I want you to practice getting gone. So hands on the knees. Use those knees to help yourself get up. And I don't know, I guess if everybody ran towards the only door, well, they, you know, you're all going to funnel and run into each other. So just, just pretend like you have somewhere to go, that you're going to people, you're going to light. So give it a try, all right? And I'll be circulating around, come up with questions. I'm happy to answer them. All right, we're going to build on this, okay? Let's do it. On three. One, two. Oh, my goodness. One, two. There we go. All right, let's give it a try. All right, you folks online, feel free to, to send us questions if you have them. We're happy to answer them. <laughs> All right, when you finish that one up, let's take an opportunity and grab a quick drink, okay? Like two-minute two minute drink break. And feel free to fire questions at me um, in between in drink breaks. I'm happy to answer them. And if, and if I think they're broadly applicable, I'll, I'll mention them for the whole group.
questions if you have them. Um, and I'm happy to answer those for the whole group. So everybody had a chance to grab a quick drink. All right, let's uh, let's make the situation worse. Okay, we'll we'll add in some more complicated things. Um, so grab a little space on the mat to call your own, and then we're going to practice some movement. And again, we're starting in these worst case scenarios, and then we're going to build to standing, because if you can deal with this stuff, uh, the standing stuff is is much much easier because you have a lot of kinetic space, like you can move dynamically in space. Okay, but when that's all taken away from you. Uh, and this is true for, for law enforcement, military, sexual assault, self-defense, all that stuff, okay? Is that these scenarios, you know, the more you have like a wall involved or the ground involved, it gets very, very difficult to manage it. Okay, so the next one is going to be a hip movement, okay? I'm going to raise my both arms. I'm trying to hold the mic in place. Up in front of me like this. Okay, my feet come into the same thing. So instead of praying, my arms are out, okay? And I'll, I'll show you why this is important in a second. And then I'm going to lift my butt up. That should look familiar. Okay, I'm going to turn a little bit of my side. And again, like all of the techniques, there's, there's hyper-technical ways to do it, and then there's just doing it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to lift our hips up, and I'm just going to try to move back and fall on my side. Okay, and you should look like a shrimp moving through the water. Okay, we call this a shrimp. Okay, so I bring my feet in, I raise up, and then I'm just going to move my hips that way and fall on my side. Okay, and you can get really extreme with it. Okay. I go up, my hips really fly up, okay? So I want you to try that awkward movement for a moment, okay? And then we'll see why it's useful. Okay, so give that a try. Yeah, and just keep repeating. I'm going to walk around and help. There's a few tree, or, uh, learning cues that I have to help out. So the arms are up, you lift the hips, and then you try to push your hips out and fall on your side. And you should look like a little shrimp moving through the water, okay? Yeah, both arms up. Uh, the artifact of me holding the microphone, both arms are up. That's it. That's it. Okay, yep, arms are up, and we'll see why that's important in a second. Close. All right. So, and then I'm going to go that way. I'm going to push my butt back towards me. Well, you can go either way, but just make sure your butt goes away. Yeah, that works if you're going to the right. Yep. Yes, that's it. Yes. Yep, the hips are leading the motion.
right. So now, now we all have the beginning of shrimp. Okay, the beginning of a shrimp. So where this comes in, well, there's there's multiple places it comes in, but one of them is if I have a tacker. Okay, maybe they bridge and rolled me. Okay, and now she's she's here between my knees. This could also be a sexual assault, so it applies here, which is why we raise our arms up. So if this person comes in, I'm just keeping their body back and away from me. So just lean your weight on me. And even if they're 300 pounds, put all your weight on me. All your weight, push up on your toes, drive forward. I'm fine. I can still talk. I'm not breathing hard. Okay. How you doing? You know, I just don't want them to get super close to me. All right. All right, come back down to your knees. Okay. So from here, I'm managing. I'm managing. I'm going to manage my microphone with one hand. Okay. So I'm here, and I'm just going to move my hips to the side a little bit to put my foot on their hip. Okay. So I'm just moving out a little bit to put my foot on the hip. All right. You can be super flexible and just put your foot here. Okay. But if you have someone who's, who's much larger, okay, you might not be able to do that. Okay, they might actually have some body in the way. So if I move myself out, it's real comfortable to put my foot. And now I'm going to push with this foot and just straighten up. And I like to hold on to a hand. I consider the hand non-essential, but it is a present for me. So I grab a hold of the hand. Right? And then from here, you remember what I told you about this position being very dangerous for them? They're going to experience that. Okay. So, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to. I'm not that kind of an instructor. I don't do things like that. So I can. Uh, I'm going to let go of this for a second. But I'm going to do two on one here. Okay. If I can hold on to that, great. If I don't have it, that's fine. Okay. But if I happen to have it, remember it's a present for me. Right. And I'm going to pull a, a leg back. Yeah. And just imagine the type of footwear you could have. Yeah. Some footwear can get really, really dangerous here. And I'm going to push with my heel through their body. It doesn't really matter where I hit them as long as I get them in the center of mass. Okay, and I hold on because I don't want them to leave. This is too much fun. Okay, so I strike, and then I can alternate feet. And I'm not doing bicycle kicks. So we'll talk about the striking here in a second. So, so we're here. Again, two arms up. I'm holding the microphone, but you have two arms up on the clavicle. All right. I'm going to move my hips to the side. I'm going to put my foot on the hip right there. You can get it on the femur. It doesn't work quite as well. Oops, sorry. All right. And I'm going to push with my leg. I'm going to slide out and grab a hand because it's there. Okay. It's my present. And then I'm going to come back with my leg. I leave one foot attached. Okay. And then I'm don't kick your partner. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to alternate. I'm just going to practice that a few times, and then I'll tell you the mechanics of how to do that. And my goal is to knock them over. Okay. If they get hurt, that's a byproduct of me just creating space. Okay. So. With your partner, let's give that a try. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. On three. One, two. Not bad. We can do better. <laughs> okay. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Let's do it. And this applies to multiple scenarios. We can do this in multiple scenarios.
finish the one you're on there. And then we're going to make the situation worse. <sighs> All right. So let's make this worse. Uh, actually, let me demonstrate how this applies in multiple scenarios, and then we'll make it worse. Okay. So uh, it could be a person either standing next to me. Maybe I tripped and fell over, and they came over. Okay. I can go from here, and I can shrimp out. Okay. And then I just put a foot up, and then I square up. And then I have all those advantages of being able to kick. So it works from there. If this person comes down into like a side control type thing, this is a very complicated uh, position, and wrestlers get really good at this. It's going to be wrestled. Wrestlers? No wrestlers. Maybe wrestlers are online. Anyway, they love side control because the whole goal is to pin your shoulders down. Okay? So I can actually shrimp, put a foot in, put a foot in, and get out of side control, okay? which is super nice. Right? So this. This, this movement and getting my feet up is a really great strategy. So now if, if this person is here, okay, they, the, the other advantage is they can't reach my face. They can't touch me. Okay? And if they can, I can either push myself away or if I'm, I have more mass, I can push them away. All right, so the striking. Let's have you come down quick. The striking, and I want you to do this with your partner. Uh, don't strike them, but there's, there's a certain uh, mechanical difference. So if, if the feet are up on my hips, Okay, now I can't reach Jess's face, okay? All right, but her legs can reach every vulnerable point in my body, all right? So she's gonna pull a knee to her chest, okay? And then I'm gonna help her fully extend the leg. So there's a tendency when I've taught this over the years, and sometimes I bring a big tactical suit, and I have people really kick me, okay? And I'm about 200 pounds. So if you, and 13 year old girls have knocked out my colleagues with this technique, so like this really works. Like I go airborne like, against very small people. Your legs are extremely strong, and when you're scared, all the blood goes to your legs. Okay, so you get way stronger. All right, it's very, very, I have to be very, very careful when I teach this stuff. But anyway, um, I see this bicycle kick motion. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a heel strike. So you're going to get your partner's leg, and you're going to pull the leg straight, and then they're going to pull the other one back in a chamber, that one, and then they're going to alternate. And you're going to pull that leg straight. Okay, so every time I help them just get that leg straight, and it feels a little different than just kind of pushing. You are, you are hitting with your heel. Okay? So with your partner, let's have you, you're going to frame up, move, move, okay? And then very carefully, <laughs> you're going to pull one knee to your chest and your, your partner's going to grab that ankle and you're just going to pull their leg straight. And the partner really pull it. Like, tug that leg straight and you'll feel the difference. All right, so let's do that on three. One, two. <laughs> to fully extend their leg.
Okay. All right. So this next one, we're, we're going to make things a little bit worse. Again, this is all optional. You don't have to do any of this if you don't feel comfortable with it. You don't have to explain yourself. All right. So if, if Jess is in this position here, same, same type of scenario, we're going to reinforce things. What, what else can she do to me from here? Okay, beyond like sexual assault. It's like maybe, maybe we just, we're fighting the, you know, the mud and the blood and the beer. And, you know, she bridge and rolls. She ends up here. Uh, but, you know, I was on the good side of things. I didn't mean to cut you off in traffic. I'm really sorry. Okay, but it's going down. <laughs> okay. Um, what else can this person do to me? Break my ribs? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But what else can she do? Think hands. I haven't shrimped out yet. I haven't made myself safer. Could go after my stomach. Yeah, so if I'm kind of curled up and pushing out, okay, yeah, there could be stomach rail bowling. But that's not going to end the fight, especially if I'm really scared. I'm going to be compressed. She can punch me. And she can grab my neck. Yeah, we can talk, of, and stabbing will be a, um, yeah, okay. So if this person's trying to hit me, all right, let's have everybody just comb your hair real quick, kind of like this. You're just going to run your, your hands through your hair like in the 80s. A car movie or something like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go like that. You can essentially just cover up, but you can also comb your hair. And I shrimp out. My foot goes to the hip. And I shrimp out again. Okay. And I've done this with Ramon. I've had him hit me at 100%. Yeah. So um, I had a concussion fairly recently, so I'm not going to ask Jess to hit me as hard as she can. But I've had, I've had very, very strong people strike me as hard as possible in front of large groups, and this really does work. Okay, so when, they're, when their hands come up, I do the same shrimp, and I shrimp, okay? Maybe I don't have a hand. Maybe I don't have one of their hands now. It doesn't really matter. That's just a present. I don't need that to make this work, okay? And then I come back. Yeah, see? <laughs> She's like, ah! <laughs> which, which I'm not going to hit them. But yeah, it's here. Place this one. Place this one. All right, and now your partner's going to fall over while you do it. So you'll comb your hair. I'll hit. And as soon as they fall over, okay, we're going to get up and we're going to leave. And where are we going? People in lights. Yes, that's right. Okay, and there's a very technical way to stand up, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second. But what I want you to work next is just combing your hair to avoid those punches. So they come in. Now they can't reach me. Can't reach me. Can't reach me. I can say ha ha. All right. And then strike, strike. They fall, and then we're going to work on a technical way to get up. But I'll just have you get up and take a few steps away. All right. Let's do it on three. One, two. <coughs> So real quick, let's, let's talk about standing up. So essentially, just stand up and get away. And uh, if you want to be really technical about it, stand up like a baby. Because babies have this figured out. I don't know how we forget. I forgot. And then I went to enough kinesiology classes and worked with folks that know these things. And I was like, oh, that's how little kids stand up. That's how my daughter stood up. So that's, we're going to learn that real quick. We're going to relearn it. All right. So <laughs> whatever situation I was in, OK? And let's have everybody lay down like this, OK? There's, 
you're not in a fitness class when you're defending yourself. So we're going to use a little cheat to sit up. Okay, I'm going to use a teeter-totter. I'm going to use my legs. I can use one leg. I can use two legs. I can use this leg or this leg. doesn't really matter. But I'm going to use my legs to rock forward. And you're already kicking, so this might just happen. You might just sit up. Okay, so it's, you know, I'm kicking through them, and I sit up. Okay, and you can rock up if you've done Turkish get-ups. That's kind of what I'm doing. And I'm going to pause here in this very loungy-looking position. Okay, so there's my ex. Sorry, guys. All right, so I'm here. Okay, and it was almost like I had a remote or play video games or something. You sit like this. I'm just going to let half my body go to the floor. Okay, so that me and that arm go down. And then from here, I'm going to suck this leg underneath me. It's going to look like this. And then I'm going to move back. And this is exactly how babies get up. And I'm going to stand up, and then I'm going to get gone. Okay, I'm going to get gone. All right, I'm going to reverse that and sit back down. Okay, so the magic of this. So the things I'm teaching you solve a lot of problems that I'm not talking about. So these techniques solve a huge amount of problems. All right, so if I knocked Jess over and she's down on her hip and maybe falling back a little bit, and I'm going to get up, okay, she could reach out and grab me. And when she does that, I don't fall over because I still have three additional points of base. I still have a pyramid, okay, on the floor. So even here, I'm like, ah, oh, gosh darn it, I gotta sit down and kick you again. All right. <laughs> Versus if I go to stand up and I stand up like this and she grabs my foot and I go, ah! Okay. Now I have a new situation that we haven't talked about yet where my back is facing. Them. <laughs> okay. So let's all, let's all stand up like this real quick. It's a really smart, situa or a smart way to get up and it, it's transferable to a lot of different situations. I rock with my feet. Half my body goes to the floor and I pull that bottom leg under me and I come back. People in lights. Okay, I'm getting out of there. All right, one more time. Let's do that. Sit down to the floor. Use your legs to sit up. Yes. Oh my gosh. And you learned that so quickly. That took me like, I don't know, three years to learn in martial arts until I realized how important that was. Okay, now I use it all the time. Cool. All right, so one time, actually, let's add another piece to this. Does anybody, <laughs> this is going to date me a little bit, does anybody remember I Dream of Genie? Yeah, she would put her arms up like this, and she would, like, wink, and she would shrug down, okay? A couple people do remember this. Great. Okay, I feel good. All right, so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do I Dream a Genie. So we're going to make the situation even worse, okay? And those punches, when I'm covering up my head like that, those important vein arteries and nerves in the inside of my arm and my neck are all protected, so if they had a bladed weapon, that's probably your best chance, okay, is covering up like that. So even if you take slashes, uh, you're keeping most, except for your radial artery, you might lose that one. Okay, but the other two are going to be okay. All right, but if she comes in and grabs my neck, okay, two-handed or whatever like that, okay, appreciate something here, okay? If I try to move into this, it's going to make it worse. I usually have 8 to 12 seconds, and I know that because I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. If you know that what that is, there's a lot of chokes, okay? Uh, chokes from everywhere, all right? So I have 8 to 12 seconds, and her fingers open up that way, that way, okay? So I can hold the mic and do this at the same time. All right, if you get in a fight, don't get in a fight with the microphone on that you need to speak while it's happening. Okay, so I'm going to come on top. Here. Okay, I'm not going to grip. I don't have to grip. Okay, in fact, I don't recommend gripping. If they're very angry, a lot of the blood is going to go to their arms. It dilates the vessels in their arms and their hands. So they're going to get stronger up here. If I grip them, it's going to make their grip stronger. The technique still works, but you can just come on top. Flat hands. Okay, go here, and then we'll do the same thing. Boom. Boom. Can you really choke me? Please, please, yeah. Squeeze, grab, choke, 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 choke. I can still talk. Oh, I'm good, I'm good. And I got a present. <laughs> okay. And then it's the same game plan after that. I rock with my feet. Okay. After I strike, and I get up and get away. So she comes in. Yep. Choke, choke, choke. Strike. Rock. And I get out. Okay. And it really does happen that quick. And it'll happen fast. Do it slow. If you can do it slow, you can do it fast. People are like, oh, I have to train at real speed. No, you don't. Okay. Uh, when you're scared, you'll just do it. Okay. All right. You don't have to do this one. This is a very uncomfortable thing to do is have somebody grab your neck. And, and if you do grab their neck, don't do what I asked <laughs> and ask her to really squeeze the neck. Okay. But just kind of lightly put your hands there. Put the hands on top. Shrimp, shrimp. Create distance. Rock up. Stand up and get away. We do that. 
yeah, you can put your hands on the collarbone. That's just fine. I know this is a really sensitive thing to do, so don't feel like you have to do that. All right, let's give it a try, if you wish, on three, one, two. Finish the one you're on. And good news, we're going to work to our feet. So let's take another short break. Use the restroom if you need to, grab a drink, and then we're going to come back and then we're going to kind of transition to on the feet because we've dealt with some of these really tough situations.
let's bring it back in and whew, we can be on our feet for a little while. <laughs> yeah, it can be a little uncomfortable to have somebody on top of you and be on the ground, but I, I think we're all doing pretty well with it. It's kind of it's interesting to see those those techniques work, right? And that's just tip of the iceberg. But that, that's a very solid game plan. And even if somebody is uh, coming up with solutions to that on the fly, uh, I can speak from experience, having taught that to literally thousands of people, that uh, you, you can't figure out solutions very quickly. Okay, That game plan, even if they run and tackle you down again, okay, and you do the same thing, they will not be able to figure out what to do. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very effective game plan. And one thing I was mentioning on the side, in the, uh, the, the sporting realm of mixed martial arts, if there's somebody down on their back and they have their feet up like that and I have a knee down, if they kick me, they get disqualified because it's too dangerous of a technique. You can hurt somebody too bad. Again, our goal isn't necessarily to hurt them. It's to get them to fall over so we can get up and get space to get away. All right, but if they get hurt, that's, that's their problem now. Okay? So, <laughs> and it's easier to, you know, to figure out who the, who the assailant was if they were injured, right? Yeah, so it leaves evidence. That's one thing they said in South Africa when we talked to some of the magistrates there. Uh, they're like, well, you know, what sort of things should we consider from a legal standpoint? It's like, well, if you're resisting and you're, and you're hitting like that, you're going to create more evidence. Okay, so that, that works in your favor. All right. So uh, we're standing. How do we establish self-defense? How do we, you know, make sure that we are not going to be uh, sued or something else like that? Okay. So if I see someone that just gives me the EBGBs, I've got a creepy Joe over here, creepy Jeanette, all right? And <laughs> creepy Jess, all right. Um, and you know, I'm walking through the parking lot or you know, wherever I'm at, okay. And I see them, and they're coming at me. You will feel it, okay. There's actually some some really interesting research coming out about uh, the intuition. So I'm going to step back, and I'm going to say stop, okay. So we're going to practice this. We're going to step back, and we're going to say stop. And I want you to step back too. Reason is, is that uh, if Jess just stands with her feet, she's not creepy Jess right now. And and I push her, she falls over, okay. Nice. So you need to move back. So if she pushes me, okay, I can resist that a little bit. Okay, so I'm, I'm driving in a little bit more athletic. I don't need to be football lineman athletic, okay? But I need a little bit more of an athletic stand. I'm going to put my hand out. That's a universal sign for stop, okay? At least in every culture I've been exposed to so far. If somebody does this, like, I should stop, okay? Now, let's practice that together, okay? So we're all standing. We're going to face the middle, and we're going to step back. Facing the middle, okay? And I want you to say stop. I'm going to turn my microphone off so we don't <laughs> blast. Me. I hope the people at home had fun with that one. The neighbors are like, what? Okay, so if I step back and I say stop, okay, and Jess keeps coming, keep coming, keep coming, right there. That was the moment. Did you feel it? I, I did. Yeah. So right there. So I, I step back. I say, stop. Boom. Right there. She just touched my hand. She just gave me permission to plow through her face. Okay? All right. So we're going to have to be really careful when we do this with each other. Okay? And this is not actually a strike. It's not the way I teach it. So somebody made the comment earlier that you're going you're gonna to proceed. I, I think it was you're going to go around them and get around behind them and go that way because it's harder to follow. Same concept, okay? So usually you're getting backed up and you're like, oh my gosh, there's a car behind me or whatever. Right there, there, okay? She touched my hand, all right? So this hand is ready to go, okay? And what I'm gonna do, and I'm actually gonna have Jess do this to me, um, is this, this part of my hand, so I'm not using a fist or anything like that, is gonna go right towards the jaw. If it happens to get their throat, like I mentioned earlier, there's like a, a, a reflex. People bounce back from that and their brain's like, Ooh, what happened, okay? So, <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk, and this part of my hand is going to connect with their jaw. If you add a strike in, power to you, okay? You strike away, all right? But I'm going to go here, and I just want her ears to go over her heels, and then she's going to fall, okay? Or she's going to be really disoriented for a second, and I'm already going that way. All right, so real quick, I'm going to have you do that to me, okay?
Yeah. Uh, Again, their problem, I guess, but not in here. Okay. Okay. Stop! Go. <laughs> and it's really difficult to stop that. My neck was tense, but if it wasn't, you just you just go down really quick. Okay. So with your partner, let's give that a try. I don't want you to knock them over, but I want you to place your hand under their jaw. Okay. And you're gonna walk past them. Walk past them. Let the walking past. Allow your arm to extend up and in the ears to open the heels. Let's give it a try. On three, one, two. And if you're joining us from at home, be very, very careful. Okay? And don't knock your partners over. walk around and see if there's any questions there. Nice job.
we had a great question. And uh, we'll, we'll actually address something else kind of unique with the answer to this. So if somebody's really tall and somebody's much shorter, okay, uh, we'll get Jess's help real quick. So if I'm really tall, I can't reach up. There, there's the super technical way that I'm, I'm going to briefly touch on that. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do this. But from, from a judo standpoint, I can get a hold of fabric. And I'm not going to grab Jess's shirt, but I can get a hold of fabric. And I come here and I can do a throw, okay, which we're not going to talk about the throw. But other things that we can do, okay, if they're really tall, essentially putting your hand on them isn't really going to do a whole lot of good. All right? But if you feel, and this will go for our against the wall technique, if somebody's like creeping up on you against the wall or something like that. So right here on your throat, right above your manubrium, okay, for our anatomy folks. <laughs> Who need the hyoid over there? I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, there's a little divot here. Okay. You see that? Feel that on yourself. Okay. And this builds on our first technique. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a finger in there. Okay. And it works really good. All right. You can do this with your partner because it actually doesn't cause harm. All right. If you miss and you poke them in the throat, you get the benefit of the first technique we did. All right. So <coughs> what we're going to do is, uh, is I'll be creepy again. And Jess, don't like jab me because it's really unpleasant. But she's just going to put her finger in there and walk past. Okay. And you'll, if you can see my face, the side will see my face. It will go this way. You can kind of see what happens. I don't particularly like this one. I know it's coming, but all right. So the hand comes up. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. You don't you don't like it. Okay. So that's that's a good answer if they're much much taller than you. Okay. It won't matter too much. I do this. I make this little like three finger thing because that gives me a little extra reach. So you, know, you don't want to be close to them, right? Yeah. Somebody's getting in. I do this little three th and then they reinforce each other. But it really doesn't matter. You can do a knuckle, you can do the thumb, yeah, you can do one finger, finger of death, okay? Uh, <laughs> and you can poke them right in there. So don't, don't, don't feel like you're going to do it wrong. Just put an object in there and then and keep going. The way we will practice this, and let's be, let's try to use the wall over there. If you do use some space with the mirror, don't lean on the mirror too hard, okay? I don't want mirrors to break. Yeah, let's not do the mirror. We've got the post, we've got by the doors there, and we've got the soft wall over here. You could also do it against the, uh, the punching bags in the corner there. All right. So what we'll do is we'll have a partner, and we'll just demo it right here. They'll just be real close to you. Oh, actually, you'll be here. I don't want to do it to you. Yeah. And, I, and I'll be coming in. So it works for if somebody's just approaching you and you're much shorter. Or it works if I'm pinned to, pinning this person up against the wall. She can just put her fingers right in here and, and then just drive and move away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you'll get to experience that in a moment, what that feels like. All right. It's that simple. It does work really, really good. You didn't have to have any special technique. You just feel for that spot. And again, if you miss, you get the advantage of whacking them in the highway. All right, on three. One, two. Another 10 seconds or so to finish that up. Just finish up the last repetition.
really like this one because <clears throat> it's not always as clear that you just say no. Okay, it could be like creepy Jess. You know, imagine you know like we, we kind of switch. Uh, I'm creepy Shane. Okay, and you know we're at a party, we're hanging out, and you know Jess isn't like creeped out by me, but she's really not interested in me. Okay, and you know over the night the personal bubble gets a little smaller, and all of a sudden we're here. Okay, she never had a chance to step back and say stop. Okay, and just like no, this isn't cool. Right. So this is a really nice one because one, it doesn't leave any marks or damage. It doesn't do anything bad. Uh, but it's it, I can't ignore it. My central nervous system's like, no, don't like it, okay? And, and it allows her to get space and go back to people and lights, okay? And from a sexual assault standpoint, okay, there's only like, and I did look at the data on this. Um, it's really hard to measure this stuff. It's really, really hard. Uh, and it's really uh, taxing literature to look at, like emotionally. But uh, yeah, our measurement's not good, but the numbers have stayed pretty consistent. For the most time, it's like a stranger sexual assault. It's only like 20, 25% of the time. So most of the time, somebody you know, okay? And it's an uncomfortable situation that just got too close, it got too close, it got too close. So I like this technique because you could use it even after the kind of the, they've eroded your personal bubble a little bit too much, okay? All right, so let's make this uh, a little bit worse too. So um, I've had creepy Jess encroaching on my personal space, okay? And uh, we'll pretend like my bubble's bigger than it is, all right? So I go back and I say, stop, okay? Creepy Jess comes in, all right? does or does not touch my hand, doesn't matter. And she grabs me, grabs my arm, okay? And then you start taking me that way. That's not good. Well, no, <laughs> I don't wanna go over there, okay? So <clears throat> what, how do we deal with that? What do we do about that? Okay, because somebody grabbing you, there's all kinds of ways people can grab you, okay? And those of us with brothers know this, okay? They grab you all kinds of different ways, all right? So if somebody grabs you, all right? The most effective way to deal with this is, is another example of children. Okay, and I have a little girl, so I know this. If you've ever been in the store with a child, and there's something in the aisle that they really want, it is time to go. And you see full-grown men and women trying to pull a child out of a store. Okay, what are they doing that allows them to be so strong? <laughs> All right, one, it's embarrassing, but two, they are reaching out this way, okay? And the anatomy is really helping them out. So if she starts tugging me, come on, Jess. Yeah, really tug me, yeah, come on. There we go, and then they do this little thing. Okay, so they reset. As soon as they start to tip, yep, keep pulling me. As soon as they say, oh, they reset, and you're like, good grief. <laughs> 40 pounds, never felt so heavy. All right, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so we're going we're gonna to lean back. We're going to practice. We're going to say, stop. Okay, your partner's going to come in. They don't have to make contact this time. They just grab a hold of you, and they start going. So I come back, and I say, stop. She grabs a hold of my hand. I get back. There's something over there I want. No. Okay, and I'm going to shuffle. I'm going to shuffle. I'm going to shuffle. Okay, and then I'll show you what happens next. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. On three, one, two. And those of you from at home, be careful with this one because you might not have a lot of room in your house. So we had a we had a good question. Uh, when when I grab a hold of this person, yeah, yeah, I'm creepy shaming. All right, and I start pulling, and, and they lean back. Okay, just gets much heavier, but she hasn't changed at all. Okay, in the last few seconds. All right, I'm starting to pull. The question was, do you shuffle towards this person as they drag you? Okay, or do you try to shuffle away? Okay, and I said you shuffle towards them. The reason is, is that I want to pivot. Like if this works really good, uh, they will they will fall over this front leg. So if they jump their legs back, they'll fall, okay? Um, let me demo that real quick so I don't fall on the microphone. Okay, so, so if I'm here and I try to shuffle back, this leg fell forward, and keep going. 
Keep going. No! <laughs> okay. And I know how to solve that problem, if anybody's curious, if you are getting drunk backwards by your hair or by your hand. But, okay, so, so I'm here, okay? And she's back. She's shuffling. I'm dragging. She shuffles. I'm like, good grief. All right, and then what people do, because it's very odd that you're as heavy as you are, all right, you've, you've man manipulated your biomechanics to become heavier. But you're no heavier. I'm just actually pulling you into the earth. That's what's happening. A couple things you can do, okay? First one, uh, I'm trying to think of which one I want you to do based on the amount of time I've All right, so she's here. One, two-hand grip. Doesn't really matter, okay? She's pulling me, okay? And she realizes it's too heavy, so they will reset and try to get a better grip, okay? As they reset, because you're all around, there's lights. I'm screaming. <laughs> ah! Okay, this person's trying to hurt me, okay, or I'm cursing at them, whatever it is. I still didn't mean to cut you off in traffic, okay? All right, so we're here, all right? She goes to reset her hands or whatever. I can come in and grab a Christmas present, sit my butt to my heels and pull her right in. She wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and I'm back to the exact same game plan, okay? So that's an option. And I'll let you choose which one of these you want to do. The other option, okay, is... It's actually easier to get out of a two-handed uh, grip than it is to get out of a one-handed grip, if you didn't know that. Okay. So she's pulling. There we go. There's M&Ms over there. Okay. And they go to reset. Okay. I'm going to make a fist, and I'm going to grab my hand. As soon as they start pulling again, go. Yeah, see her face? It's like a magic trick. Yeah. So, so I'm here, and I just make a fist with my hand, and I reach over and I grip it. Okay. And then I can just pull my hand right out. Okay? And, I, and, and the harder they're gripping, the easier it is to do it. It's a really weird thing. If they have a one-handed grip, the same technique works. Okay? But I just aim my thumb towards where it breaks, grab, pull. Okay? So you can choose. You can sit to your butt and execute that fabulous game plan that I shared with you earlier. Okay? Or you can try the risk escape. You just make a ball your fist, grab and pull. Okay? But make sure they have a little tension when you do that. It makes it easier. So I'm here. And I'm gone. People in lights. All right, give it a try. On three, one, two. Another 30 seconds to finish up the one you're on, and we had a good question. Right. 
So we had a question about uh, how to sit and then what happens if your feet miss. Okay. So <clears throat> if I'm here and you know, this person has gotten a hold of me, I went for the M&Ms, okay, and I became heavier because I consumed them with my mind, right? And uh, she's pulling, she's pulling, okay? And I go to sit, but she never relaxes for one, okay? And, and I decide I'm going to do this because in my scared state, I kind of do that, and then I end up not falling in the microphone, and we end up here, okay? So the solution to this, all right, whether they have your hair and they're dragging you backwards or they have your arm and they're dragging you backwards, is twofold. One, any opportunity that I have, maybe there's a curb or something, she's got to stop, re-own herself, re-grab the grip, okay? Is I'm going to bring my legs up, okay? And I'm going to just turn and put my feet up, okay? Which is hard to do while they're dragging you, okay? So one thing that I learned from Aikido, I did a little bit of Aikido, is dead weight is very, very heavy, okay? So if, you know, if I had hair and she was dragging me, okay? If I just get dead weight, and she goes to pull me. Oh, yeah. Nice traction. Okay. But if I get tense, there I go. Dead weight. Yeah. Keep dragging me. Oh, yeah. Tense. Dead weight. Okay. <laughs> so that's kind of a cool thing to know. And there's multiple ways to demo that. But essentially, any time that they pause is an opportunity for me to swing. Uh, would anybody like to try that? It's kind of a weird one. Be careful with your back. You're dragging somebody much bigger than you, okay? Um, and if you want, like one of us can come drag you a little bit. All right, let's just take like two minutes, and we'll just we'll just try that. Anybody that wants to, all right, let's give it a try. On three, one, two. was fun. Uh, and it really does work. So the, the, did everybody kind of feel that where you get lazy? And then if you, you tighten up, it's easier to drag somebody that's tight. Okay. That also goes for picking somebody up. So we, we do a little trick where you come in and you lift somebody by the armpits and they get tense. And just right up they go. Okay. But when you get them lazy and they have to pick them up like segment by segment, it's like lifting a chain. It's just that your, your nervous system's not really good at it. Okay. So it's kind of a unique thing there. All right. Questions on that? That's one of those what-if rabbit holes. What if this? What if that? No? All right, grab a quick drink. Oh, we're going to talk about weapons here in a few minutes. Yeah, we'll save that one. We'll save that one if they're armed. Okay, because there's lots of ways they could be armed. And I've got stories. So. All right, grab a quick drink, and then we'll come back. All right?
right, go ahead and finish up your drink. We'll pull it back out. And the question is, do we add another technique? Because that's, I usually teach three to five techniques, and that's kind of capacity, unless you have a room full of martial artists. Uh, this is not a martial arts class, by the way. Uh, I am pulling from a lot of different martial arts for this particular class. All right? And it's important, but I have several like escape training certifications that I've held for about 10 years. So I'm, I'm pulling kind of heavy from those. But then we also had some expertise in-house on so pulling a few of those uh, pieces as well uh, from another gentleman that, that helps teach this. So yeah, this is not a martial arts class, uh, but it is informed by some martial arts. Things like that. All right, so a quick vote. And there's no way for people online to vote. Uh, but hopefully we'll get a uh, resounding consensus here. I can give you another technique. Okay, one It's usually pretty popular. Somebody comes up behind you and grabs your neck. Um, which does happen, that does show up in the stats. I'm happy to talk about that. Okay, that's a standing situation, there's lots of solutions to it. Uh, or we can move into talking about weapons. I did have a request for if somebody's on your back and you're on the ground, and I knew some cool tricks to get out of that. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna, t I'm gonna talk about the weapon thing regardless. Um, we can just have more or less time to do it. Okay, so option A, somebody grabbing you from behind standing, raise your hand if you're interested in that. Woo! Okay, and I didn't limit how many times you could vote, did I? <laughs> All right, uh, option B, you're flat on the ground and somebody's on your back and you want to get out. Okay, there's some twisting hands. All right, so the person's still winning. More times with weapons in the conversation with that. Okay, over there, and we'll talk about it. All right, so let's talk about somebody grabs you from the neck standing from behind. Okay, and I'm happy to stay after and we can, we can troubleshoot stuff and answer questions. All right, so. If Jess is behind me, and I'm 6'2", so I'm going to squat down a little bit, all right? And she grabs my neck, not even like that, yeah, okay, like this, all right? Or even just one arm behind, and like this, yeah. So how do you deal with this? So there's a couple solutions to this, all right? And one that I learned relatively recently, I guess three years ago, uh, I learned this one, and I love it. I, I, like, even some of the judo solutions and the other things I've seen, the jujitsu responses, there's ways to, like, grab your legs and flip them over and do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, I love this one. Okay, uh, does everybody know Mario? Mario! Yeah, like Super Mario Brothers, okay? Yeah, so <clears throat> you can go either direction, okay? One way is gonna work a little bit better than others. One ends up in kind of an arm lock uh, situation that they can get a headlock to. So I'm gonna raise my arm up, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing it between us, okay? And it does a few things that are kind of cool. That's all you need to do is you're gonna raise your arm and you're gonna step back with this foot. And, and I end up completely out of the lock. And if you know, uh, if you happen to know some throws and things like that, I have underhooks now, okay? So she's done, <laughs> okay? Or I can just, I have inside position, so it's much, much easier to push and get away, go for the face and walk through them. Okay, anything that we've already learned. You can even sit down and kick to open targets and get away. So pretty much, you can freak out however you want to. You have your arms in the inside position, you're, you're in a better spot than before, okay? All right, so here I am. Raise the arm, okay? And this allows my shoulder to dip, okay, and it gets out. If I just turn, she turns with me, because my shoulder gets caught, okay? So when I do this, my shoulder drops, okay? And she can do a fully locked-in rear naked choke. Do you, know, do you know how to do it? You don't? Okay. So you're going to put this arm around my, my neck, grab your bicep, and put this hand with a fist behind my head. Okay. Good one for a moment. All right. Here we go. So she's going to lock it in. Grab your bicep with that. Yeah. Yep. Start to squeeze. I'm out. It's really weird. I was so happy about three years ago when I learned that. Okay? So um, if you're not comfortable with that, you don't have to do it. Okay? If you want somebody taller, like me, I can come and help you with it. Okay? Don't do a fully locked in and try to squeeze them out. Okay? Uh, just put your arm comfortably around, like Jess did it the first time, down around my collarbone. This is perfect for practice. Okay? Raise your arm. Okay, I can go this way, too. And I end up in a nice arm lock over here. Which, yeah, don't worry about that one too much, okay? But then I can just get space, push him, okay? You know, strikes, land a couple blows, run. Sure. Yeah, that's it. So, either way you go is going to work, okay? That second ends up in some interesting details, which I'm happy to talk about. All right, on three. One, two.
finish up there. All right. And all of these positions could get more complicated. Um, I, I will offer, we, we won't have time to talk about this next uh, idea that I'm about to share with you. If somebody lifts you and walks backwards, I can show you how to get out of that, but we'll save that for after the, after the seminar, just because it can be more and more and more questions kind of thing. Uh, it's actually not too hard to get out of either, surprisingly. Uh, but I had a request from two people just to demo what to do if you're fully flattened out on your belly and somebody's on your back. So I'm just going to show you how to deal with that because uh, there's some interest in it and I'm going to lose the mic for a moment. Okay? Good? All right. So if I'm down, I'm completely flattened like on this? the ground? Yeah. Okay. All right. And this works even if, um, if, if you're familiar with grappling, they can put hooks in which just means that the, she has her legs inside of my legs, like that. And this is even worse, so we can get out of this, okay? And I have no defense from here. I can't, I can't even headbutt the person backwards. I have really got nothing, okay? So what I'm gonna do, all right, and yeah, there's stories about this. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna be here, okay? I'm gonna go to a recovery position, like you see in uh, CPR first aid, okay? And I'm gonna stretch, you couldn't see this back leg, I just kind of lift it up. And now this leg and this arm are flat on the floor. Okay. And I'm just letting people walk a little bit to look. Okay. Now I'm gonna bring this arm in close to my side. Okay. So one more time. I'm here, this is about, in my book, this is about as bad as it can get. Great, because they can parachute on my back, please don't do it, because I'm sorry. But there's, no, no, you're fine. You're not, you're not doing it. All right, but this is, this is about as bad as it can get. There's literally nothing I have left to help myself, okay? So I'm gonna stretch this arm out, okay? Even if they have underhooks in the arms, if you know wrestling, you know, they can, they can get more control. I'm just gonna stretch this out and put my ear on my arm, okay? This leg, I'm gonna lift and set it on the ground. It's really hard to stop that, okay? I'm come to the side. See how she's already starting to fall off? And this elbow comes in, elbow to the body, and start to shrimp, and over they go. Yay! <laughs> so there's a quick demo. All right, so afterwards, if you want to talk about it a little bit, you can troubleshoot stuff um, and visit about that with a lift and, lift and move away. Okay? So, yeah. All right. Yeah, we had three people that wanted to see that. Goodies? Are there a couple boxes of goodies? All right, let's bring it back in and we'll, and we'll sit here. We're going to talk a little bit about... Let's go to the clock. 12, 14-ish. All right, so we've got about 15 minutes left. We're going to talk about that. Okay. So um, as an ex-law enforcement officer, federal law enforcement officer, I can tell you that if you have weapons, practice using them. Okay. Um, we have several options in here. By far, my favorite is sitting over by my laptop over there. Go grab it. And this came up in the last workshop. I got super excited about it, so I decided to make it a thing. So, uh, a flashlight, okay? The reason I like flashlights so much, one is because they're not very threatening. So if it gets taken away from you, which a lot of times weapons get taken away from you and used against you, if somebody takes this away from you, they're probably not gonna say, ooh, I'm gonna bash you with it, okay? They're just gonna be like, what the heck? And they're gonna throw it away, okay? Nice thing about this is that if Jess was gonna attack me, I said, okay, if I, yeah, so Jess is gonna come in and attack me, and I'm like, oh. yeah, they're just right in their eyes. It is, is the most weird, like, your, your peripheral kind of goes away, and, and my game plan from this, because I haven't hurt anybody, is I can essentially just navigate and just keep flashing it in their eyes, okay, like that, and then I just pop their knees. And that's really what I do. <laughs> and I think that that's a fabulous way, because they're not getting closer. This doesn't really cause harm. The other thing I like about flashlights is that if you hold them, it protects your hands against a lot of those injuries I talked about earlier, okay? So if I do decide I want to hit somebody, okay, and I have a flashlight, one, if I lose it, oh well, okay? And I actually just picked this up for this workshop when I went and bought a little from my car. Um, it's, it's got a single LED in it, okay? Um, but yeah, you know, if, if I go and I, and I hit somebody, my hand is relatively protected, okay? So that's really nice. Um, and again, if they take it away, they have these little glass breakers. Do not test that, by the way. If you have something that breaks glass, we have another one in here that does that. Uh, it will just shatter your window. You're like, oh, let's see what it does. No, <laughs> don't, don't play around that because your window will literally just fall to pieces. Okay, so uh, flashlights. Really like flashlights. 
pretty cheap. You can get uh, my favorite flashlight. You can get these high lumen flashlights, and lumen is just a measure of how bright they are. Uh, I got this one from, and I'm not affiliated with this group in any way, but it's Surefire. Rechargeable batteries. You can buy extra batteries for it. It's like 70 bucks, it's very, and it's like this big. And it has a little clip. It's very cool. Um, you can put it on your keychain. These ones are relatively light. And those high lumen ones, that nobody's coming anywhere near you if you put that in their eyes. It's, like, it's completely blinding. This one is, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awful. Uh, especially these little LEDs works really good. So nobody else is really preaching that, but it's something that I strongly believe in. And uh, even even as a law enforcement officer, I actually chose, because we only had to have two of the three less than lethal options on our belt. So that's OC, that's baton, and that's taser. Um, I actually chose to take one of the other items off and put a flashlight in my belt. So I really, really like them. Big fan of flashlights. Okay, so I highly encourage that. All right, we also have, and I am not an expert with these things, uh, Cole, the other gentleman that's presenting some of these workshops. Is anybody familiar with that? It's got a little point. It's another win window breaking device. They're, they're illegal in some states, but it's a Kubaton. And uh, there's some techniques that you can circle and get out and you can use these. And like I said, I'm not really trained, but it also has the benefit of being able to hold it. And you can hit things, okay? But then you can also like poke them, all right? Like you can do hammer fist type stuff. Oh, it just makes my skin crawl because I'm really familiar with the anatomy of, of, of the body. And if, and if you hit somebody with a blunt object like that, it just, oh. yeah. Um, Kubaton, kind of interesting. I'll pass this around. We can take a look at those. <laughs> I'm not endorsing using these. It's just kind of an issue. Uh, maybe I'm going to throw it. <laughs> Risk management. Kubaton? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he does say that. Uh, yeah, so if you have keys on the other end. One thing to note about that is that if you choose to use a weapon, like a flail, uh, this is where the flashlight gets into a really wonderful space where you're kind of protected. You've escalated the situation to use a, using a weapon. So make sure that your response is um, reasonable compared to the threat that you're experiencing. If you are smaller and weaker than the other person, you can justify more force. So if somebody's much bigger and stronger, question? I don't know, what did you say about that? Yeah, I will Google it. Actually, could you go Google that real quick? Yeah, we'll take a look. We'll take a look. I looked at the law of illegal weapons. Uh, there might be some special statute on these. Um, slingshots, sandbag clubs, which I don't know what that is. Uh, brass knuckles, and yeah, I think those would be illegal. They didn't have this one listed, but they might have another law or some amendment to it or something. So she'll, she'll take a look. All right, so let's get down. OC spray. All right, and we do have some practice ones. In 10 minutes left. <laughs> uh, yeah, if folks want to practice a little bit, we can. I think I have more to say about them than, than I'm concerned with you learning how to use them, per se. Uh, has anybody been OC sprayed before? Okay, I have. So uh, a couple things to know about it. One, bear spray is not to be used on people because it shoots with such velocity that it can damage their eyes. Not because of what the spray is, but because of how hard it shoots. Okay? It's actually got half the percentage of uh, active ingredient as, as your over-the-counter uh, OC spray does. Law enforcement gets double what you get, so it's way worse. Um, so having, having been exposed to it, not all people respond the same way. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to set it. So you get sprayed with it, and you're like, uh-oh, and then there's a few seconds of waiting till it act activates, right? Um, I like OC because I can go one, two, three, four people at the same time. <laughs> Create a you know, cloud. That some of it comes out as a, a kind of a, a foam. Uh, it'll shoot in a stream, and some of it mists. Okay, it'll create a cloud. So know what kind you have. Uh, I do recommend, th these are little practicers. <laughs> Yeah, these just have water in them, um, so you can practice with them. So get one, uh, maybe get two, and you can practice with one. Uh, they should be labeled water spray if they're a practice container. Okay, don't get that wrong, because uh, it's really unpleasant to, to spray and walk in the cloud or something like that. And uh, like I said, it does take a little time to set in, and the person can still fight even though they're maybe they're very uncomfortable or their vision might be impacted or their breathing or whatever. 
but it's, it's very safe. Okay, so it's a relatively safe uh, tool. So this doesn't have anything in it. Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, yeah, and they shoot, I don't know, seven, seven to eight feet, uh, depending, on, depending on the spray. But you need to practice getting in there, getting your finger on the button, and actually using it. So if you choose to use OC spray, uh, I encourage you to practice with it. Get a container and just, you know, for a couple times, just practice accessing it, using it. Okay. It's a big deterrent, too. So if you hold that out, somebody sees that you have it, they're pretty likely to stop. All right. So OC. Any questions about OC? And you can grip it and do the, the punch. Yes? Oh, it's, it's the active ingredient. Yeah, yeah, it's an irritant. Uh, Jess, if, if you could look up what OC stands for, I forget the, the compound. But I think it's a plant ingredient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, it, it depends. It, it's all a depends type of thing. So I like mist because I don't plan on, well, uh, I don't plan on walking through the cloud. I want them to have to walk through to get to me. So if it's just hanging out, then I have that value of, of space. But if you mist, like where you need to run to, <laughs> realize that you're going to be running through it too. It's going to be unpleasant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, the stream that maybe will foam up is kind of nice because you're not going to walk through the cloud. Um, when I got tested on using this stuff, they, there's a variety of ways that they you have. Yeah, you get voluntold or you have to practice with any tool that you're going to use. Uh, you have to experience it uh, in law enforcement specifically, and I think in the too. And yeah, we had to run like a 200 meter sprint so we were breathing hard to make sure we got some into our throat. And then we had to stand and just take it. Um, and I got sprayed with the stream. And, it just and then it took a few seconds to set in. But I could still fight after I got sprayed. So we had to, we had a, a person with a kick shield or something like that. And they said, all right, go to town. So, you know, I grabbed the back of that guy's head and I went Muay Thai on him. And they're like, calm down, calm down. I was like, you told me to. <laughs> I'm really worked up right now. <laughs> so, you know, I started throwing knees and dragging them around. Uh, so I was, I was, it was surprising to me how effective I still was, even after I got sprayed. Yeah, as long as I could grab him. I couldn't see him. I didn't know where he was. <laughs> but as soon as I grabbed him, I could start throwing knees. So, yeah. Other questions I don't see? That one. Yeah, the capsaicin. Sharpies are fine, surprisingly. Sharpie markers and pens. You can carry those in planes. Those are very dangerous. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, tasers. I don't have a taser here. Uh, things to know about tasers. One is that they are extremely scary. Scary to the point that if somebody's hiding in the bushes and you like shock the taser, they will come out and say, nope, nope, I give up. Okay. Uh, as far as effectiveness, like the drive stun of tasers, I've been tased. Has anybody been tased? Uh, yeah, Cole, uh, again, the other instructor, he said him and his friends bought one, and they just kind of tased each other to see what it felt like. Uh, there's, there's two ways that they work. One is like the little arc, and you touch somebody with it, and it hurts. It's like, ah! You know? uh, and then there's the, the probes that shoot out. So there, there's some that like launch these little, they're actually straightened fish hooks. They're, they're size 12 uh, claw fish hooks. And they, they shoot out, and they, they spread apart, and they connect to you, and your whole body goes, Bam! And then you fall over. That's assuming that they make good a connection. Okay. Um, I, I, think I would I would recommend it for the fear value. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily you know bank on those two probes because you got to practice with them, right? They're kind of expensive to buy replacement cartridges and all that kind of stuff. Um, they can work. I'm not a big fan of them. I've seen some of the data, some of the raw data, and things like that. I don't know. That was one of the things I chose not to carry around. I was, I was practicing. I think OC was better. Okay. Multiple people. But anyway. The shock value, the fear value of a taser, way worth it. Okay, so if you want to have one, just make sure you keep it close to your to your body, keep your elbows in, arc that thing, and people will leave it alone. Okay, or even if somebody's just giving you the creeps and you pull it out, just go. Okay, uh, they'll <laughs> they'll think twice. Okay, so that's my thought on tasers. Uh, yeah, questions about tasers? They are legal in the state. I did check. No? All right. Last thing, such perfect timing. I got through all the technique I wanted to. So we 
have a gift for you. And this is, I want a smart case, you see it has a this is, this is a little noise maker. Um, and I opened one so we can hear what it sounds like. I'll turn the mic off before I do this. <coughs> yeah, so drawing attention to yourself is a surprisingly effective um, method for keeping yourself safe. Again, we're in a very safe community, but things happen, okay? So this has a flashlight on it, so it has a keychain, a little lanyard piece, and you could cup it in your hand, it could protect your hand if you're hitting. Uh, on that note, don't, uh, I, I don't advise putting keys between your knuckles, all right? If, if you do that, the keys, uh, they have a pretty good lever arm, and if you hit something, it'll hold, it'll hurt you probably more than it'll hurt them. So I don't, I don't advise that, but if you're gonna have something just like all of your keys in your hand, and that's, you'll have a club that you can smack with, um, yeah. For it's worth. So you have a little light, and then it pulls. Okay. That works pretty good. Uh, so everybody is welcome to grab one of these. It's our gift to you for coming today. And uh, yeah, I think that's a fantastic tool. If you accidentally pull it, that'll be embarrassing. Social event or something like that. Uh, be like, no, no, that's just my, you know, that's just my my little noise generator that, that helps out. Or if somebody's just intimidating you, you can pop that and then they'll be like, whoa, sorry. So if they're if they're in the right, the or if you you know lean back and say stop or you pull this, any anybody who is uh, not necessarily meaning you harm, like maybe they're kind of like, you look lost, but they're kind of doing it with the eyebrows down, and <laughs> you're just like, no, I'm uncomfortable with you, leave me alone. Um, you know, they will show signs that they didn't mean to bother you immediately. Okay, and then somebody who's up to no good would advance, and then you'd have a clear indication that you're in a self-defense scenario at that point. Okay, um, so let's yeah, actually we'll put that out. So as as we go, you're welcome to grab one of those, take it with you, uh, put it on your keychain, you know, uh, take it to your next white elephant, <laughs> give it away as that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm gonna say it's been a lot of fun, and if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. It sounds like the rec center at some point is interested in having me do a a class, an ongoing class, so watch for that. And yeah, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for being a little bit vulnerable, exploring some, some techniques that aren't super comfortable. So I appreciate that. And if, uh, I really want to leave on this note that, you know, if something bad happens to you, um, really, I, I don't believe it's your fault. I would encourage you to seek help immediately. The sooner you get help, the better. You don't want to fall into um, the scenario where I could have done something better, I should have done something different. That kind of language is, is very difficult to, to navigate and recover and heal from. It. Okay, so I encourage you to seek, seek help uh, immediately, uh, whether that's safety help, but also medical and counseling assistance to work through things. Okay, we have resources on campus for that. All right, it's not your fault. Again, there's, you know, there's multiple prongs. There's the environmental piece, the perpetrator piece, and then there's the self-protection piece. And I actually stopped teaching these workshops for a while because I was like, ah, I don't really know how I feel about that. I don't want people to walk away thinking they could have done something better. But as long as you self-select in my class, I'm happy to teach it. I don't force it on anybody. So, all right, thank you so much. Have a fantastic afternoon. I'll, I'll hover and see if we get any questions from the folks online. And please grab one of the noisemakers on your way out, or the, the safety uh, alarms. All right, thank you. <laughs>